As promised, I'm back to finish this ceiling. I've got my plaster, I've got all my tools. I'm gonna to show you my technique for taping and jointing plasterboard, and also explain to you the areas around the house where I think this is a really good job to give it a go and do it yourself, and also the areas that are probably best avoided. Before I get on with the messy stuff, I thought I'd show you the two different types of joints that I've got in my ceiling that I'm going to be taping today. The first one is the long edge of the 8x4 sheet that I've got, and that's the tapered edge of the tapered edge plasterboard. I've got a little bit of a mock-up here just to, to show you. And if you can imagine, this is the bottom joist of the roof truss. The tapered edge joint actually runs perpendicular to the joist. If we just turn it over to make it easier. That means that this edge is only supported every two foot. And in between those supports, I've got two pits of plasterboard that can actually move differentially to each other until this jointing happens. This is not just for decoration. It actually ties the two boards together so you can't get this movement between them. It's called tapered edge because within around about an inch and a half of the edge, it actually tapers off. I think I can show you a little bit easier if I use a torch and you should be able to see that actually there's a gap where the two taper off. Now this means that we can actually put some tape or mesh in there and some plaster and actually fill that joint nice and flush with the rest of the board. On this example I've just left a little gap between the two boards because it's quite common to have a little bit of a gap. It would be nice to think that everything was perpendicular and parallel to each other and you end up with no gaps but in real life it doesn't quite happen like that. So on this particular edge I'll be using mesh to span the joint. Now this mesh is actually self-adhesive, so it's fairly easy just to stick on, and it's quite happy to stick up there without falling off. The other good thing about it is that it's really quite strong. It's not something that's gonna suddenly tear, and it also, by definition, has holes in it. And that means I can force some of the plaster through these holes to actually fill this gap as well. And then essentially, I'll be filling between here where the taper starts on this board and here where the taper starts on this board. So essentially, I'll be filling that trough nice and level with the plasterboard face. And that will hide that mesh, give it strength, tie the two boards together. And it'll end up with a nice flat surface between here and here. All you really need is a knife that's wider than that taper. I've got a six inch knife here to fill that joint. And it's probably the easier of the two joints to fill. So that's the tapered edge joint. The second joint I've got is at the ends of the 8x4 sheet or any cut ends, you basically end up with a butt joint that looks a little bit like this. And once again, I'll turn this over just for ease. Now, the butt joint, by definition, on my ceiling, runs parallel to one of the joists. So you've actually got quite a good fix in either side. And it means that even if you have got a gap between them, there's no movement, there's no differential movement between the two. But it is a little bit more difficult to tape and hide that joint because there's no taper and there's no recess. Now for this joint, I've decided to use paper tape rather than the mesh that I think is a little bit thinner, which means that my buildup can be thinner and it's just easier for me to work with. So that's the two types of joints, and it means it's, there's two different processes. I'm gonna start with the easier one, which is the tapered edge one, and that means I'll do everything in one direction first before moving on to the butt joint, which will take a little bit more work. I've decided to use some ready mixed compound. Now, generally in the past, I've always mixed it myself. That's the cheaper way of doing it. I've never used ready mixed compound, but I thought for this time, I'm gonna give this a go. It's gonna be a little bit easier because I don't have to mix it. And I'm keen to see how this compares with something I have to mix myself. So let's get on and get a bit messy. There's no reason you can't tape this joint using lots of short lengths of mesh as you work along it. However, I decided to stick it up in one continuous length from one side of the workshop to the other. 
Although this did mean a number of moves of my work platform and some delicate support of the roll, as although it's sticky, it's not that sticky. With the mesh in place, I'm gonna do this in a couple of passes. And the first pass is essentially to really embed that mesh and make sure that any gaps between the two layers of plasterboard is filled. So I'm pushing it in pretty hard and pushing it over the mesh as hard as I can. I'm not worried too much about the tapered edge at the moment. All I'm doing is essentially embedded, embedding the mesh. This is my first try of the pre-mixed filler compound. And as you can see here, by the way I'm working, it's just too thick. I would like to be able to spread it along this joint in one action, but it's so gloopy, I just can't work with it like that. So essentially I'm using like a two pass system. This first pass really wants to embed the mesh. You can see actually that the two boards are still moving against each other. And that's going to continue until this plaster goes off and get some strength in that joint and across the mesh. Just going over with the second pass now from taper to taper just to fill that whole recess. At this point you obviously want more material than less. You don't want any low spots because it doesn't matter how many times you strike it off. If you've got a low spot, it's always going to be low. So the first one is just a very light pass without any strength. Just cleaning the blade there. This is where gloves come in useful. You can just clean your blade before the last pass. Fingers on the back either side of the taper. Just about 45 degrees. Nice smooth movement. back in the other direction as well from where we finished just now see if this at this point if there's any low points you can just add a bit more material and just come back through again I'm trying to get this as perfect as possible because I know from experience that sanding it's a lot more difficult than putting the plaster on. I have five rows of plasterboard across the workshop, so four joints between them like this to fill. So this is just a repetitive process working on one at a time. This process was made even more laborious than it should have been, having to use this sticky, dense premix filler, which just didn't want to cooperate. After 24 hours, it was time for sanding. I'm using a fine sandpaper here, concentrating on the edges where it meets the plasterboard. During this sanding, expect everything in the room to end up coated with a thin layer of plaster dust, including your lungs if you don't wear a mask. So I've just sanded this long taper edge and I'm just having a quick look at it. And it's pretty good actually, it's pretty flat. But every now and again, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little get that right there's a little indentation there now i don't think that's enough to warrant re-skimming the whole thing so to get rid of something like that all i would do is put a little bit of filler in and there you go i think that is as good as i need so for the second type of joint the butt joint i'm gonna now just run through my technique that may be a little bit different to the professional plaster but it works for me and it gives me the results that I really want. I'm going to be using paper tape for this. So for the first thing I'm going to do is on either side of the joint, give it a couple of inches of filling material. So the tape's about two inches thick. 
So I've put a thin layer about four inches wide across this joint for the tape just to embed into. So if I just slightly push the tape in there, it will stick on that joint all the way to the end, at which point I can just cut it off. Now working from the middle out, just embed the tape into the filler that I've just put in. Just firstly lightly push and you can push harder and harder to the point where that tape is never going to go anywhere. I then put filler maybe two inches away from either side of the joint up to the joint and then just taper that in. So I'm essentially filling the gap either side of the thickness of the tape. And it doesn't need much as you can imagine the tape is quite thin and all I'm trying to do is going from zero to the thickness of the tape. Once I've got enough material on there on one side of the tape all I need to do is run that down touching the plasterboard on one side and the tape on the other just to get a taper on this side of the tape. Then all I do is the same on the other side of the tape. So for the first pass I'm essentially putting plaster either side of the tape, feathering it out onto the plasterboard on one side and making it level with the tape on the other. And that's all I need to do. I'm just going to leave it like that, let that dry. That means I've got a flat plasterboard, a bit of a dip with plaster. I've got the thickness of the tape and then feathering back out. So all I need to do is let that dry and come back. I can give it a bit of a sand. If I need to then put a thin skim over the top, I can do it then. However much you think you've hit every screw, you need to get to this point, you always find a few that you've missed. So I must admit, when I'm ever doing any plaster work, I can never help think back and think of that most famous UK plasterer ever. I'm sure you know him. You've just forgotten who he is. Loads of money. Shut your mouth and look at my wad. I love plastering. Bish bash bosh. Loads of dosh. Once I had exhausted my Harry Enfield repertoire, which didn't take long, I gradually worked my way through the rest of the 15 joints I had to do in this direction. After another 24 hours and a quick sand, each joint received another thin layer of compound over all its sides, and then another final sand all over. During this whole process, I found lighting to be a pain to say the least. Because I have no windows here in my workshop, my ceiling lights I had to keep putting up and taking down, in addition to using my standalone halogen lamps. Finally, the ceiling was ready for paint. And there it is, a finished ceiling, although I still do have some areas to paint under the lights, 
but I'll do that when I fix the lights permanently, followed by a final coat all over. And don't worry, there'll be another video coming out very soon explaining exactly what I'm doing with these lights. In the meantime, if you're interested, there's a link to these lights in the description below. So this is a great project for the DIYer. And as I said at the beginning, there's some areas around the house where you can get away with doing this job as a DIYer without being 100% perfect. And it all depends on the light. Let me just explain to you with another little mock-up. For instance, if I light this plasterboard from the front, it's quite difficult to see any blemishes. And if this was a ceiling with lights on it, you definitely can't because you're basically looking into the light. But if this was a corridor or maybe a living room with a patio door at the end, suddenly you have a light coming directly from behind and which really picks up any blemishes. It means every little imperfection you can see. So if this is your first time taping and jointing, I would highly recommend sticking to ceilings and small rooms like toilets and bathrooms until you're more proficient. Anything that's got a light at the end that's going to reflect off of that wall is going to exaggerate every little imperfection. I'm not saying it can't be done, but definitely get a bit of practice before you try to tackle jobs like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next time, remember, bosh bosh, loads of dosh. Sing a song of six, pence a pocket full of dosh. Dibble, 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 bosh, 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 loads of money.